Hi, Mom. Uh, no, it hasn't started snowing here yet. Yeah. Yep, I just have to finish this Christmas video that I'm working on and uh, get it uploading, and then I'll be on my way. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I won't drive if it starts, I promise. Okay, I love you too. See you later. Bye. Ugh. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, 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 no! <sighs> Martin. Martin. Mm. Martin, wake up. Wake mm. up. Damn it. Those who aren't in the know, Nights into Dreams was a game developed by Sonic Team for the Sega Saturn. In it, you take on the role of two children by the names of Claris and Elliot, who each have a nightmare about an upcoming event in their lives. During this nightmare, the children are transported to the World of Dreams, where they meet and befriend a jester-like being called Knights, who they're able to merge their consciousness with in order to fly about this mysterious realm. Together, Claris, Elliot, and Knights fly through different dream and nightmare worlds in order to stop an evil being known as Wise Man the Wicked from gaining enough power to take over the dream world as well as the waking world. Each level has you flying through the air Peter Pan style as you do aerial tricks, fly through hoops and obtain stars in order to earn points, as well as collecting 20 of these blue spheres so you can find and destroy a nearby nightmare generator. Once you've destroyed all four generators in the level, your total score is added up and then you're transported to the boss of that stage. Do this with all seven levels to stop Wise Man once and for all and save the world. It's a short and sweet little game that has a lot of replayability simply due to its arcadey design and scoring mechanics. I actually reviewed this game a few years ago in an older video of mine that, uh, was back before I knew what the hell I was doing. Anyway, Nights into Dreams is a really good game that I highly recommend if you own a Sega Saturn, but it's not the game we're talking about today because this is Christmas Nights into Dreams. Essentially, this is just a glorified demo disc that was given away in magazines, console bundles, and alongside other Sega games during the 1996 holiday season as a way to promote the Sega Saturn as well as the main game. However, over the years, it's sort of become recognized as its own separate title simply because of how different it is, what with the Christmas theme and all, and the sheer amount of extra content packed inside. It may not technically be a full game, but it's still an interesting enough little oddity of the Saturn era, so I think it's worth talking about on its own. Plus, I don't know if you've noticed, but there really aren't a lot of Christmas-themed video games around, unless you want to talk about Elf Bowling, which, uh, I sure as shit don't. Anyway, Christmas Nights Into Dreams opens up with a narrated illustration of our main characters as they travel downtown during the holiday season. Everyone that passes them by is in a rush to get their shopping done, and a mild chaos seems to fill the air. And even though, for the most part, everyone seems fairly happy and in the spirit of the season, Clarice and Elliot can't help but feel that something is missing. That gentleman? That lady? That phenomenal voice acting? Finally, the duo realizes that the gigantic Christmas tree in the middle of town is missing its star, and I guess this is somehow causing the townspeople to forget the reason for the season. Because there's no star on the tree. Ta-da! But, I mean, it's a holiday special on a demo disc for a cult classic game on the Sega Saturn, so if you were expecting Shakespeare, well, I don't know why you would be, but don't. I actually like this opening sequence quite a bit. It reminds me of one of those narrated segments in Reading Rainbow or a similar show where they just jostle the illustrations on the page around a bit to go with whatever's being read aloud. It's pretty cute, if a little bit cheesy, but I think it fits the tone of the game perfectly. And truth be told, I greatly prefer it over the nightmare CGI openings of the original game. <laughs> Much like regular Nights into Dreams, you start by picking either Claris or Elliot when starting the game, and then you're thrust into the game's one and only level, Spring Valley. However, everything's a bit different this time around, with snow covering the ground, festive lights and decorations draping about, 
and a nice rendition of Jingle Bells to listen to while you play. If you play as Clarice, the level is exactly the same as it appears in the full game, with the obvious addition of the Christmas decorations, but if you play as Elliot, you get a route through the level that's completely unique to this game. Regardless of who you choose, the game is an absolute joy to play, and it's the perfect title to complement the holiday season. The visual direction of this game is really something to behold, with clever character designs, use of color, and stylized graphics that have aged surprisingly well considering that this was an early 3D title for a relatively underpowered 32-bit console. It's a wonderful look that surprisingly manages to outshine even the original game, which is quite impressive seeing as Nights into Dreams is among the best-looking titles on the system. Much like before, your goal is to destroy all four Nightmare Generators, which have been replaced with Christmas trees, and once you do, you're again transported to the boss stage where you fight a Christmassy version of the level's boss. Slam his face into the ground a few times to defeat him, and once you do, you'll get half of the star for the town's Christmas tree. After this, you get to see a rundown of the current high scores, followed by opening up Christmas presents and a mix-and-match minigame to unlock various goodies. These range from various sets of concept art, a time attack mode, a karaoke mode for the one song the Night series has, and even a mode called Sonic the Hedgehog into Dreams where you get to run around the level as a blue blur himself and even get to fight an inflatable Dr. Robotnik boss. Nice! And believe it or not, this was actually the first time Sonic ever appeared in 3D. That doesn't count. Wow, that means that Sonic made his debut into the world of 3D 21 years ago, and they still haven't figured out how to make it work yet. Yeah, I went there. Now you can play the game again as either Clarice or Elliot, depending on whom you chose the first time around, to experience the level in a slightly different way. Once you beat the level, you're again transported to the same boss as before, but in reverse this time, and after you beat him, you'll obtain the other half of the Christmas star. And for all your efforts, you're rewarded with another cheesy cutscene, some warm Christmas feelings, and a chance to unlock even more Christmas presents. But of course, this being an arcade-style game, the fun doesn't have to end there, because much of the point of Christmas Nights, as well as the original game, is to master each level so you can increase your score. Normally, I couldn't care less if I get a high score or not, but here the game is just so much fun and it's such a joy to fly through a Christmassy world that whenever I sit down to play this game, I usually end up beating it several times in a row. And not to mention, there's just so many goodies to unlock that each time you play, you'll always have something new to experience, which makes this demo disc so large that it's no wonder people often refer to it as its own standalone game. And that's Christmas Nights into Dreams, a nice little gem of a game to put you in the holiday spirit and inject a little bit of enjoyment into your life. <sighs> Did I miss it? Did you miss what? Did I miss the review? Well, yeah, I just finished. Man, I really wanted to mess around with the Saturn's internal clock, too. Uh, why? Uh, because if you play it at certain times of the year, different stuff happens. Like, like what? Well, if you play it on Christmas Day, Santa shows up. Or if you play it on New Year's Eve, the title screen changes. You know, stuff like that. Really? Yeah, it's right here in the- That's okay, I, I believe you. Let's, let's just play around with it and see what happens. So yeah, if you thought this game had a lot of content for a demo before, prepare to have your mind blown. If you play this disc during most of the year, it actually becomes what you'd expect, which is a demo of the main game, called here Nights into Dreams Limited Edition. However, if you play during the months of November and January, everything will be covered in snow with Christmas baubles and tinsel strewn about, like the residents of the dream world are just starting to put up or take down their holiday decorations. Clarice and Elliot will now wear wintry outfits, or Elliot will at least. Clarice seems to be showing more skin than ever. Like, damn girl, it's cold outside, put some clothes on! And if you play during the month of December, their outfits will change to reflect the holiday, and nights will be all Christmassy as well. This game actually relies on the Sega Saturn's internal clock so much that it even changes things up to match what day you're playing on. Where'd you get the eggnog? I brought it with me. I'm gonna get some ice. If you play on Valentine's Day, the snow that falls will be replaced with hearts, and if you play on April Fool's Day, you'll no longer take on the role of knights, but instead their evil sibling, Riala. But this time, foolery gets even more crazy than that, because during the month of December, the game is also affected by the time of day. For example, if you play at 3 a.m., you'll get to see a lunar eclipse, at 6 a.m., the northern lights will appear, and at noon, you'll be treated to a wealth of rainbows and confetti. These changes to the game that occur during what month, day, or time you play, combined with the unlockable goodies, Christmas story, and gorgeous visuals, make this much more than just a demo disc or sample game. It's a little different, but it's basically a full-fledged game in its own right, and more importantly, it's one of only a surprisingly small handful of holiday-themed video games, and of those few holiday-themed games, this one is easily the most memorable. This game is really special to me, and I make a point to play it every year around Christmas. It reminds me of the joyous feeling that this time of year has, and it brings back warm memories of holidays past. And in a time when everyone seems too busy to stop for even a single second to just appreciate the feeling in the air and the joy of spending time with your family and friends, it's the perfect little memento to get me into that holiday spirit and remind me of what this season's all about. And uh, on that note, I should probably get going because it's Christmas Eve and I've got some family to see. Damn, it is snowing like a son of a bitch out there. What? Uh, God... Damn it. Hi, Mom. Yeah, it's, uh... Snow in here too.
I'm sorry. No, I, I know you don't care, but, uh, I, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm gonna leave first thing in the morning. I'll, uh, I'll be there before breakfast. Yeah, I love you too. Merry Christmas. Well, that's depressing. Yeah, tell me about it. Hey, it's Christmas. Maybe you could like wish for the snow to stop or Santa to give you a ride or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice, but uh, things don't work like that in real life. Well, shit. <sighs> Damn it, I got so caught up in trying to make the perfect Christmas video that <sighs> I completely forgot about the true meaning of Christmas. Jesus. What? No. No, I meant taking time off of work and spending that time with family and friends, but here I am on Christmas Eve without either. Merry Christmas, Martin. Merry Christmas, you. You don't know my name, do you? No idea. <laughs>